Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, in your providence, you called Joseph Sharashewski from his home in Eastern Europe to the ministry of this church, and sent him as a missionary to China, upholding him in his infirmity, that he might translate the Holy Scriptures into the languages of that land. Lead us, we pray, to commit our lives and talents to you, in the confidence that when you give your servants any work to do, you also supply the strength to do it, through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life is in you. But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with him, and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slightly momentary affliction is preparing us for the eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but, what, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for the Mass this afternoon is a portion of Psalm 84. We will recite together in unison verses 1 through 6 of Psalm 84, which can be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 707. Psalm 84, verses 1 through 6. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts! My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the sides of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, where the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself. 
himself in Zion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness, and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Perhaps you've seen a picture or you've been to a, a gardening center where uh, there's like a cheeky little caption on a particular plant that says, uh, I'm not dead, I just look like this. Uh, those sorts of things always make me laugh, and of course, they're meant to be funny, but what they tell us is that life sometimes looks different than we imagine. For plants, we imagine that life looks like greenery most of the time. Whether it's a succulent or some type of deciduous tree or a, a flowering plant, we, we see leaves, we maybe see buds or colors or flowers, and we think that that sort of greenery means life. But what the cheeky little note at the gardening center might be telling us is that there are far more varieties of plants than perhaps we are capable of recognizing. Because of course there are plants that look like little sticks that are very much alive. There are plants that look like some type of dust or like a lichen on a rock that are very much alive. And there's always so much to learn about these forms of life that our hearts and our eyes, our senses, may not be initially prepared to receive. I think this is true of people as well. I don't know about all of you, but there are days that I'd like to put a little sign around my neck that says, I'm not dead, I just look like this. <laughs> uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not tired, I just look like this. I don't know, perhaps. But the human condition is a bit like those unexpected plants sometimes. There are ways of life, there are ways of being alive that we're not always attuned to recognize. There are circumstances that may look like death, that may in fact be the source of an abundant, creative, sort of yet an unanticipated life. There may be even gifts within us, parts of our own hearts, that feel like they are mired in destruction and decay, and yet are in fact very deliberately cultivated by God to produce something magnificent. Maybe something that we have not yet even imagined possible our own hearts, lives, and gifts. I meditate upon this image with the words from St. Paul today that come to us from the second letter uh, to the Corinthians, where Paul is talking about how things that appear to be passing away may in fact be the foundations of a new and radical form of life. Paul was writing to a community that was used to tumult, that was used to violence, that was used to commercial exploitation, that was used to any number of things that looked like sin, and mess and decay. And yet Paul knew that at their heart of hearts, the Corinthians were the beginning of a fledgling church whose influence would stretch to the edges of the Mediterranean world. And in fact, I would argue, would stretch their influences to the edges of all the world where the gospel is proclaimed. Paul knew that the beginnings of a church community could look like a mess. They could look like something that was dead. They could look like arguments. They could look like decay. They could look like even violence. And yet when the gospel was being proclaimed and preached, he saw that something living was taking root there. 
This is intimately related to our text from the psalm today, Psalm 84, which is my favorite psalm, as I think a few of you know. It's known as the Pilgrim's Psalm because it was often used as a psalm sung on the way to places like Rome and Jerusalem. Now, for those of you who've been on a pilgrimage, you may know that many of the days of walking or driving or biking or however you're approaching your destination, you know, the beginning days are filled with anticipation and joy, but if you're on that pilgrim's path for long enough, there will be a day when you want to quit. There will be a day when you have a blister on your shoe, you've lost your gear, your friend has tapped out and gone home, you are alone, your feet ache, and you are wondering why you decided to do this crazy thing in the first place. And that is the day for the Pilgrim's Psalm. Psalm 84, verse 5 says, Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. The desolate valley, a place where no one in their right mind would spend very much time at all, is suddenly covered in springs. A pilgrimage that might seem long and arduous or may seem like a questionable idea after many, many days of walking and suffering is suddenly found to be a place of springs. What looked to be dead is actually alive. I draw our attention to that today, uh, first of all, because we are honoring a man of the church, uh, a saint, who was the Bishop of Shanghai and suffered from debilitating, um, many debilitating health issues that threatened to end his ministry. Now, his name might be a bit new to you, as it often is uh, to Episcopalians, and certainly was to me, but Samuel Isaac, Isaac Joseph Cherishewski, who was the Bishop of Shanghai in um, the very late 19th century and into the early 20th century, was the first one to translate the entirety of Holy Scripture into Chinese. It was very important to him to be present to the people that he served and to use the great gift that he had with languages to complete this work that he believed God had given him to do. He suffered from debilitating illness, paralysis, in fact, and he was able to type with a single finger, a single middle finger that he spent over two decades finishing this translation with. After person after person told him to just rest and retire and go home, why in your right mind would you continue through this desolate valley? And yet this bishop, Shiroshivsky, a servant of God and a servant of the people that he was with, knew that there was indeed springs, life, present within his work and ministry. Now this is an example to us, I think, because right now so much of the language of our church and so much of the language of modern life is rooted in this vocabulary of decay. We're very aware of the things that are passing away around us. We're very aware, very aware of the ways the institutional church continues to fail and has failed. And certainly we're very aware of the ways that we ourselves continue to fail. We're very aware of the places within our hearts that seem dark. We're very aware of the places that we'd rather not share with others. We think perhaps there were gifts we had in our youth, but we've not used them, and now there's no point. Perhaps we've given up a dream or something that meant something to us in our earlier years. And it can be easy to live in this place that is incredibly attuned to all of the ways we seem to be in decline. But God, in Scripture, again and again reminds us that sometimes we are not dead. We just feel like this. God reminds us again and again that the things that seem to be death are, in fact, the beginnings of a radical and unprecedented resurrection. In fact, the whole story of Scripture, the whole story of our faith, the whole reason for the existence of this building, the whole reason any of us are here right now is, in fact, the story of a man who appeared to be dead for three days, but was, in fact, very, very much alive, and whose resurrection teaches our church again and again that our imaginations sometimes are limited. Our imaginations see with human eyes instead of the eyes of the divine. But when we remember saints like Bishop Cherishewski, and when we remember communities like the Corinthians, and when we remember journeys like pilgrimages, we are invited again and again, as many times as necessary, to see with the eyes of God that in fact what we are meant for is not a desolate valley or even a valley of decay, but instead a place of springs and resurrection. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit,
prayers of the people this afternoon take the form of Form 6 in the Book of Common Prayer, which can be found on page 392. We will pray together responsibly. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Daniel, our bishop, and for Sean, Norm, Stephen, Gordon, and Nicholas, my brother and sister priests who worship and pray in this place. For all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially for all of those people who've been entrusted to us in this place for our prayers, including Chris, Sue, John, George, Mary Jane, Marlene, Marguerite, Mark, Ira, Nick, Bryce, Alex, Rodney, Howard, Richard, Margaret, Will, Lisa, Scotty, Cindy, Eric, Shama, Rebecca, Anne, Clayton, Colin, John, Liz, Oliver, and Stephen, and all of those people who have asked us to keep them in our own prayers, and all people throughout the world with no one to remember them and to pray for them. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially today giving thanks for the beauty of this day and the beginning of the autumn season. We give you thanks for all of the many ministries in this place that continue to thrive by the graceful, graceful generosity of our volunteers and those who minister here. We give you thanks for our families and all the children in our formation program, for our outreach ministries and for all the people that they serve, and for all of the ways God continually reminds us of his generous abundance and care. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially all those who died of COVID-19 in this past day, and all those whose lives have been taken from them by acts of warfare, violence, fear, or oppression, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most, most merciful Father. In, in your compassion, compassion forgive us, us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which the earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. May the Lord receive the sacrifice in my hands, to the praise and glory of his name, both for our good and for that of all his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven, lighting upon the disciples, to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood, and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh. Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, blessed Mark the Evangelist, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the Church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.